Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. My name is Marie Hopkinson, and today I'm interviewing another Chinese medicine practitioner, Tyler Rowe, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. It's my pleasure to have him on today. And we're going to be talking about seasonal changes and things that you can do for your own lifestyle and how to prepare yourself best to stay healthy when the seasons change. Now, Tyler's got heaps and heaps of knowledge, not just from practicing Chinese medicine, but he's also a scholar of studying Chinese medicine, and he's an expert in particular areas we're going to discuss I'm going to let Tyler talk about those things. So welcome, Tyler. Thanks for having us. Great to be on the show. Awesome. Um, so let's start with seasonal changes, right? Because that's something that everyone experiences, no matter what hemisphere of Earth you're on. Mm. Seasons change. <laughs> Nothing stays the same, right? So mm. what are some things that people can do to kind of stay healthy or keep healthy in mm. these seasonal changes, do you think? Yeah. Um, like the, the change of seasons is always the really tricky part. And, uh, and what makes it even trickier is in Australia, we have this weird idea about when the seasons start, which is different to the rest of the world. So it actually makes it even more difficult to work out when the season change is. And uh, every year I have it, and this year I had people coming in going, oh, it's, you know, it's the second week of September and there's no spring weather yet. And I'm like, well, spring hasn't actually started yet. Uh, the rest of the world does the seasons off the equinoxes and off the solstices. So like 23rd of September, uh, uh, 22nd of March, 21st of June, 21st of, of December, somewhere around there. And that's the solstices and the equinoxes. But weirdly in Australia, we go off the first of the month and we're the only place in the world that does it. So we kind of, we're starting our seasons like, like three weeks before the actual season starts. And so I hear a lot of practitioners going, it's time for seasonal change, you have to be ready for this sort of thing. I'm like, oh wait, we're not there. And clients coming in saying, oh, it's still cold. I'm like, no, no, we're not there. Like we're not like spring didn't start until the 23rd of March this year, uh, or that would be autumn in the Northern hemisphere. So, so it's often tricky to even find where the seasonal change is. And with climate change, it looks like a lot of seasons are starting later. Like uh, a lot of people are talking, Oh, look, when I was a kid, like summer, like it was hot in December. Now it's not even hot until February. I'm like, well, it's because summer doesn't start till almost the end of December. Um, but it does seem like it's pushing out a little bit further. Um, but we sort of look at, um, uh, like from the Chinese medicine point of view, like four seasons for the year, so roughly like 72 days for each season. And so the last 18 of one season and the first 18 of the other season is kind of like the, the seasonal change time. And that's when it's sort of uh, the trickiest to get things right, because we've got really nice, clear directions on what to do for each season, how we should behave, what we should eat, um, how we should go about our day. And there's some really cool stuff um, that I sort of... Uh, part of what I teach and what I follow, which is from the Yellow Emperor's Classic, which as Marie knows, is sort of the, the basis. It's like the sort of Bible of Chinese medicine. And the second chapter does this really cool breakdown where it goes through each of the seasons. So it starts with spring and it talks about like, spring's all about um, spreading and effusion. It's all about growth and generating. So we kind of need to reflect that. Like we should start getting out and doing things. And it even has this cool line we were just talking about before where it says, um, it says, uh, the Chinese says, uh, Beifar, it says the like, hair of the quilt. I translate it as bed hair. It's like, just have bed hair. Just go out with bed hair and like stride <laughs> around, take long strides. So it's kind of like you go out and you just get excited. It's spring, you go out, you take it easy, you stride around. You think only of, of new things and of growth and life and generation. You get up early, you really enjoy the day. And that transition from then uh, into summer, like the seasonal change is really easy because we say like, spring has like an upward movement in spring and then summer has an outward movement so it's still sort of moving in the same direction things are sort of growing up in spring like all the shoots start to grow up the plants start to grow um i had a long history um and like a whole second sort of life in uh, feng shui for years i was uh, studying feng shui teaching feng shui and i went and i did a lot of um teaching internationally which was really cool um, and in feng shui, they always talk about shapes and colors for the um for each of the elements and the shape that's associated with the wood element, which is spring, is rectangular and the color is green. So rectangular doesn't mean just a rectangle. It's like things that are like tall and long, like think bamboo. So like things that are sort of growing up. So in spring, everything's kind of got this upward movement. We kind of match that. And it, it kind of transitions really nicely into summer because summer is that transition from moving growing up to growing out. Like our plants that have grown up now produce fruit. So it's all about opulence and abundance and, and, uh, and flowers and fruit. 
And, uh, and in the Yellow Emperor, it says, we've got to think like that. We should think of beautiful things and magnificent things. We shouldn't think of bad things. And we should go outside. It's, I think it even says, um, I'm paraphrasing, but it says, um, treat the outside as if it's the only place to be. Like, um, you know, like avoid the indoors, like just spend all your time outdoors and love it. And go outside and sweat, like exercise in summer. Go outside and sweat and open the pores up. Because in our body, we have the same... Um, we have a mirror of what's going on in the environment. Like in spring, everything's sort of coming up. So we say the young, like the warmth in the body, it's been deep inside the body. Like in winter, our hands and feet are cold. All the blood and the warmth goes into the middle. In spring, it's starting to come up. And in summer, it comes out. So when it comes out, we can, we can sweat like our hands are warm. We can go out and exercise. We can take clothes off and go crazy. And we can just, yeah, like treat outside as if it's the inside of your home, which is kind of cool. Yeah, right. That's interesting, and, isn't it? I like that idea of this the 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 growing up and then growing out. Yeah, and, and then spreading and, and then spreading out. out. Yeah. And so it makes a nice transition because like you think of it just in your body, you think of it like, hey, my warmth is coming up to the surface and then going out. That's an easy transition. Like and we don't usually have a lot of uh, I mean, I, I know you'd be the same. I don't get people coming in the clinic going, Oh, it's this this change from spring to summer is a really tough transition for me. It's like change of spring to summer it just gets better and better and better like we're like it's like that's the awesome transition spring to summer it's the next change after that where things get tricky because everything's sort of come up and gone out to the surface you know we're sweating we're outside and then it starts to it starts to shift and it's kind of like the like the yin yang symbol like you've got like the the yang coming up on the left side which is like the the original yin yang symbol is a white fish and a black fish so the white fish is coming up the side and he's growing up the side and yang is right at the top and there's that black dot in the middle and that black dot, dot in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the middle is where things are about to start to turn into yin. Things are about to start to stop going up and out and start to go in and down. And that's that transition from summer to autumn. And that's the really tricky one because we go from, like we're still out there going, I still want to wear my shorty shorts and my crop top and run around crazy stuff. Um, but it's turned to autumn. And yeah, I never wear shorty shorts and crop top. That would just be mean to other people and unnecessary. Um, but it's changing the cold. And we still want to run around in our summer gear. And so we, mm. we do that transition badly because autumn's all about all that energy now is starting to move, move downward first and inward. So, and same with our circulation. It's all gone to the surface. And now it's starting to sort of retreat back the hands and hands and toes, the fingers and toes are getting cold again. Our nose gets cold. All the warmth goes back to the core. We're kind of fighting it. We're still out there going, I still want to be in summer. Mm. And we're still out there sweating. And in the Yellow Emperor's Classic, it says, like, at this time, that we're meant to, um, we know that things are getting bad. They talk about the, the punishment of autumn, which sounds really awful, but like, you know, like you've had such a great time, and now you're going to be punished. It's going to start getting cold. And, yeah. you know, traditionally, like in the, like in sort of ancient times, that was the time they did, like, executions. Because you didn't want to do executions in summer. I'll let them have their summer. Everyone's having fun. No, in autumn, everyone's miserable. Let's go watch an execution. So they do all the executions then. They punish all the criminals. So it's kind of the, the punishment yeah, of autumn. Right. Like it's going to get crap from here. So let's, 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 you know, let's watch crap TV or whatever. Like we all sort of start to go indoors. Okay. And they say we should still be trying to think of peaceful things though, because we don't want to sort of get caught up in, in the negativity. So we try and think of peaceful things. We start that kind of inward movement as everything sort of in the environment starts to, get a little more tense, a little colder, a little tighter. We try and still keep those peaceful feelings. And it's that transition that's really tricky. And that's where I find a lot of people get really sick is coming out of, um, out of summer into autumn and the other in which we'll talk about in a moment, going from winter into spring. Yeah. And that's the one where I try and talk to a lot of clients about <laughs> the big thing is clothing. Because in Australia, we just go, yeah, I'm still in my thongs and my shorts and my singlet and I'm great. And you go, dude, it's, it's March. And I know, I know. We, we, might, we might want to just clarify what a thong is for the Americans. <laughs> so, <laughs> a thong. So and you just wear your dress ring and your singlet. No, it's flip flops. It's um, pluggers. You know, yeah, yeah. What, what, do you, what do you call them? Uh, pluggers. Do they call them pluggers over there? <laughs> no. <laughs> that must be a Western Australian thing. I don't know. Uh, I just heard it. Heard it. Flip flops. You know, like summer sandal shoes, like the ones you just slide on. Yeah, <laughs> not, not the other. <laughs> they might just get this yeah. impression that Aussies are just running around with yeah, their G-string. G-strings on. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so sorry. Yeah. To so, yeah, put your G-string away. <laughs> no, and that's the time when I'm really talking to clients about, look, you know, you know it's coming. And uh, the way we look at the three months um, from a Chinese, uh, Chinese medicine point of view, the three months of spring uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, August, September, October. 
okay, or Northern Hemisphere, February, March, April. So if you've hit, you know, uh, if you've already hit February, you've already hit the seasonal change. Uh, right. And in Australia, people will still be going, oh, like, you know, work, like, well, that's the summer to win, summer to um, uh, the, the summer to autumn change. But in that summer to autumn change, people in February are going, it's still hot, don't worry about it. And we're still out now. Yeah, not, not our negligee. We're in our flip-flops and stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's when we've got to start thinking about what we're wearing, but also what we're eating. Like we change our diet. Like we can't have so much cold, raw stuff. We've got to move to, we're going to start transitioning in the same way. So as that starts to move inward, we start to transition. But I said, the first one is that transition from, uh, from summer uh, going into autumn, which is what we're sort of, um, we're on the other end of it here in, uh, in, um, in, in, in Australia, in the Southern Hemisphere. But for those in the Northern Hemisphere, um, you're coming out of your summer, you're going into, into autumn. And in autumn, we've got this inward movement we need to honour because once we hit winter, winter's when it's all like it's in and down and everything's kind of shut down in the body. Like all the circulation goes right into the middle. Hands and feet get cold. The same in the environment. We say it's a time of closure and storage. So we don't get it much in Australia, but obviously there's lots of regions where everything freezes over. Everything kind of gets sealed up. You think about hibernating animals, they collect up all their nuts and stuff, stuff them in their cheeks, then bury themselves in the ground for winter. And we kind of are meant to do the same thing. Like in the Yellow Empress Classic, it talks about um, when we get to winter, we need to, uh, we need to, um, we need to keep our thoughts hidden and our mind closed, like we've got something secret. So we kind of get into our own little shell and kind of hide in there. And it's like, and we we try and gravitate to the warmth. It sounds pretty logical, but we just try and keep out stay away from outside keep warm and not sweat like we shouldn't mm. exercise heavily in winter because we're opening all the pores and trying to push all that young all that warmth back to the surface when it's actually right down deep in the center and i've really embraced that this year because we've been in lockdown in melbourne so i didn't exercise for all of winter yeah i just sat down watched tv ate lots of food didn't exercise really honored that winter energy um, <laughs> how's that working out for you <laughs> it's it's been working out great uh, because when I'm doing um, recordings, as we were talking about earlier, I put suits on that don't fit anymore because I only have to wear the top. I'm wearing a tutu under this or no pants. Nobody knows. I don't have to fit into the pants at all. It's fantastic. Um, but yeah, this idea of not sweating in winter, trying to sort of stay shut down and warm and sleeping more, like doing more sleeping through winter. And then that's when we come to our other tricky transition, which is coming from winter out to uh, coming out to spring. And that's what we're in now in Melbourne. Like we've come through winter and we've come out with springs coming out. And as soon as you get that first nice day, everyone down here, I live by the beach, everyone runs down the beach and in the water going, God damn it, freezing and the water going, I love it. And they're taking a, look at me, I'm taking a photo. How sunny it is, it's awesome. And the water's 11 degrees. And then yeah. freezing. I had a guy come out the other day, he goes, oh, I can't feel my feet. He tripped over, he goes, oh, I can't feel my feet because I was so numb. But he's taken selfies because it's nice and sunny outside and not dressed appropriately. I'm like, just for a little bit longer, still mm. dress a little like it's winter. Like, you know, put your flip-flops on, but keep the beanie on too. Yep. Uh, my daughter walked out the other day, she said, I'm ready to go. And I looked and she was wearing shorts and a beanie and gumboots and a singlet with a cardigan. I'm like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Everything covered, <laughs> like all bases covered. And yep. so yep. in that transition time, the easiest way we get sick is by exposing too much of our body to, to the cold. Like we go out, we get a warm day, and it's just enough warmth to open the pores up. I've got um, blue tongue lizards in, in my yard that I have like a little enclosure for. Mm -hmm. And like they come out for a day and you go, oh, spring's here. And they come out and you see them sort of come out and go, ah, no. Nah. And they just go back in. And you won't see them again for like two, three, three weeks. And they'll come out again and go, hmm. And they'll sit, get a bit of sun, go back in. And just now they're starting to come out and just hang around all day. And we might even get a little bit of a shift back to cold. But we know that our, our, all our young has moved back to the surface, so we're okay. We can stay out now. We've just got to, got to wait for that comfortable transition. And it's, not, it's all about not forcing ourselves to sort of move into that, oh, hey, it's summer. I'm, I'm there already. No, no, no. We're barely into spring or we're just coming through spring. Like, take the time moving through. And the same with our food. Like, we can start to have more cold, raw stuff. Like I was saying before, spring's all about green and upward movement. So you can, you know, it's all, I think, tall green vegetables. Like they sort of represent that spring energy. So you, we can start to eat more of things that are a little bit um, uh, pungent or spicy. They kind of disperse and open up the pores and start to slowly have that transition to summer where we can run around and do all the crazy stuff again. Mm -hmm. But it's having those comfortable transitions. 
And of course, for us, like it's just it's just busy, busy time for us. Those transit, those seasonal changes when we get all the people coming in for all the seasonal illnesses. And it's just the Chinese saw the seasons for a long time, like a recorder, I should should say. They recorded the seasons for a long time. So they just got used to seeing that happening and knowing, okay, this is what's going to happen. And they even have um, in, uh, uh, in, in sort of Chinese culture, there's, they call them like the 24 um, seasonal markers. There's like 24 sort of mini seasons. So like two for each month. And they're like, one of the seasons is the insects wake up. So it's like the insects come out of hibernation. Another season is spring rains. And then another season is the first fall of frost. So it kind of tells you each little step along the way rather than just spring, summer, autumn, winter. Um, in Australia, like traditionally, the, the, the Indigenous owners of Australia did six seasons, which is really cool. And different yeah. things, they all, most of them seem to do six. I've been doing some research on it, but they all had different times when their seasons went by. Oh, our season starts when the lily pilly um, fruit ripens. That's when the season starts. So they had all these different seasonal markets. And they had this system of six, but different lengths of seasons and different seasons in different parts of Australia, which is really cool because in um, one of the systems I teach in Chinese medicine is all about, we call it the six chi, which is using a six season model, um, looking, looking at um, the seasons through the year, like divided into six. And it kind of, it doesn't match up, but it's just interesting that ancient Chinese sort of look at the same thing. Yeah. Mm. I, the more I look into Indigenous medicine, Australian Indigenous medicine, the more there's similarities between a lot of ideas of way for just the way of thinking about how illness and health and that's another <laughs> it's another yeah. conversation but it is really interesting and it's also a really good point that you make that you know it's not necessarily about a, an exact like in the west we like these fixed amounts of times like three months three months three months well some yeah, seasons yeah. maybe they're not three months right maybe <clears> one <throat> season's a bit longer than the other season or mm. that kind of stuff like and, we, yeah, and measuring know. the seasons off, um, like, I mean, I thought it was beautiful that like one of the Aboriginal cut, when I think it's further north, they measure off when the lily pilly fruit ripens, like yeah. oh, when it's ripe and ready to eat, oh, season starts. And I, I've got a mulberry tree in my front yard. My girls do the seasons by the mulberry tree. Yeah. Like, dad, dad, the fruit's almost ripe. Is it, is it getting close to summer? I'm like, yeah, it's almost summer. Like the fruit's ripe, it's getting close. You know, summer's coming where, you know, we're, we're past, the, past the, the start of spring, we're getting close to summer. And they, they watch it by the leaves falling. And my, my girls have no concept of time. Like, you know, we were supposed to go to New Orleans last year. When are we going to New Orleans? Oh, it's it's in March. Oh, is that next week? And this was in December the year before. So they're like, oh. Oh, okay. when the mulberry fruits, when we've eaten all the mulberry fruit, and they were like, oh, okay. Can we eat it really quickly this year, please? <laughs> but they, they yeah. we do naturally tend to, and it's like a, I mean, like Chinese medicine was originally like a farming medicine. Like it was an agrarian culture. It was a farming culture. So their calendar was based on farming indicators, not based on the actual dates of the month or astronomical things like the actual equinox and the um, solstice. That's an astronomical phenomenon. And that came a little bit later in Chinese medicine. That's when they started using the solar calendar. But their early calendar was just farming. So it was just on, this is when like, oh, this is the season when you plant rice. This is the season when you harvest rice. So it's really cool because it wasn't measured by something um, that you can't sort of hold up. Like you could look and go, oh, the seasons change rather than hang on, check my calendar. Is it the first of the month? Oh yeah, the seasons changed. And our whole thing for the first of the month in Australia, it's weird because, um, and I didn't even know it was a thing until I started traveling internationally. I'm like, oh, you know, it's because it's the start of spring. Oh, I mean, autumn here. They're like, no, it's not. Like, oh, you do seasons different in Australia. And like, we actually do it because of military tours originally. <laughs> like they would change their winter uniform to their summer uniform and they'd do it on the start of the month because it was just easier to remember. And like, we've still oh. weirdly done our seasons based off that. Like that's one thing. Other people are like, oh, it's because that's the meteorological way of measuring the seasons or because the Australian seasons are earlier. Not really, because if they were, then so would be the seasons in in Africa and uh, and. Um, uh, South America, but it's always someone from the Northern Hemisphere telling us how it goes on here. Oh, because in Australia it's different. Like, have you lived here? <laughs> we still have seasons. Like, it's different in different areas. <laughs> we have seasons, but I kind of, I really love that idea of measuring your seasons by. And I said, I've got this mulberry tree. I planted it when it was two twigs. Now my whole family climbs into it every summer and eats out of it. And that's our seasonal marker through the year. Like, we can watch wow. all four seasons through it. And like, you know, and I, oh. Um, do I have to start putting clothes on? Have a look at the mulberry tree. 
oh yeah okay the mulberry tree starting to take his clothes off so it's time for us to put some more clothes on I'm like oh that's really cool it's one of the things my daughter says time to put more clothes on oh that's so awesome that's so yeah. great yeah i mean something that my, you made me think of just then was like you know it's more about like the environment being in control of you rather than in the west we want to be in control of the environment like we yeah, want to dominate everything part of my man-made calendar <laughs> yeah like you you will <laughs> you will be spring because i told you it's spring that was the whole thing with their uniforms like oh we've got to change our uniforms and like and i think also military tours i was reading this about military tours were seasonal pay was monthly so like well, wouldn't it be easy if like we got paid at the start of the, at the end of the tour <laughs> so let's just squeeze the seasons to fit and it just we can't do that like we've got to follow the yeah. season because you know there is and we all do it like well actually ice cream i was going to say people tend to i've got an ice cream place around the corner here and there's just a queue a mile long at the moment yeah. but everyone eats ice cream through winter and in fact winter is probably the time we can cope with things like ice cream better because all our circulation is actually in the core of our body and we all go oh, i'll eat i'll eat ice cream in summer so in summer all my circulation's gone to the surface and i dump something cold in the middle and all my warmth is right out at the surface Whereas in winter, all my warmth is in the middle. When I dump something cold in there, I've got like the internal fire to deal with that. Mm. We tend to, you know, we ideally we sort of crave cold things more in summer and we crave warmer things more in winter. Um, strict Chinese medicine, like never anything cold and raw. And it's the bane of my existence is, and I know there's some people who are watching this who are awesome for their cold raw stuff and all about cold raw. Well, guess what? If you're watching this podcast, you're going to learn about not cold raw and reason I've talked about lots of other people have talked about it. It's a really difficult thing to manage. And even most of my staunch, most staunch cold raw supporters admit when it gets to winter, they just can't do it. It's just too yeah. hard. Yeah. And I have to admit when it gets to summer, I, I have a cooked lunch every day. I have cooked breakfast. My family's very lucky. I, I do lots of cooking and so does my wife. And we eat all organic because my best mate runs the organic shop next door. And, uh, and we cook everything up from scratch. But I have a cooked lunch every day. And then it gets to the middle of summer and I just think, I'm just going to eat half a watermelon today. And that's all I want to eat. <laughs> and yep. I think it's okay. Like, you know, we are, we are a warmer climate here in Australia in different parts of the world. But you've got to remember Chinese medicine, as I said, agrarian culture, like farming medicine, but also based on Northern Hemisphere. And the kind of the center of Chinese medicine was around like the Yellow River Basin where it is colder. And yeah, and there's not a, like, it's probably not best even in summer there to eat a lot of cold raw stuff. But my kind of compromise to people is, hey, it's summer, have some raw stuff. Um, yeah, if you're going to drink beer, don't drink it warm. I remember years ago, my mentor, like putting a beer under the tap and I was like, oh, wow, is it that warm that you're trying to cool it down? And he said, no, I'm trying to warm it up. And I went, yeah, I'll take a hard pass next. <laughs> like, if you're that's, have a, that's the most horrible thing I could imagine, a warm oh, beer. Oh, I drink that. I drink this beer because it's good warm. I'm like, no, no beer is good warm. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, there's some things where if you're like, going to have it, just have it. Like, yeah, yeah that's what... I'm asking, uh, how do you eat ice cream then, Tyler? I'm like, in a bowl with a spoon. <laughs> like, I don't warm it up, do I? I know, fried ice cream, Chinese style fried ice cream. <laughs> like, if something's meant to be cold, have it cold, but it doesn't have to be cold. Like, water doesn't have to be fridge cold, mm. fruit doesn't have to be fridge cold. Yeah, you have to refrigerate it. I'm not saying everyone let your blueberries rot, but take them out. Like, we take stuff out in the morning and go, actually, we do it to ration for my kids because they just like gorge themselves. Like, there's your allowance of blueberries for the day. And we're like, okay, they were waiting to warm to room temperature. You've already eaten them. But kids are a lot more, they kind of got a lot more fire, so they can get away with more, more yeah. raw stuff. Their organs aren't quite so mature, like their digestion isn't as strong, but they also run hotter, so they can get away with it a bit more. But I think um, I think it's a, a big thing for a lot of us is just wanting to have everything fridge, fridge cold. And I'm like, even in summer, maybe not fridge cold. Like, and if you do want um something you still want to eat cold stuff is to have something warm with it and um i had one of those kind of grasshopper moments i got involved in chinese medicine through martial arts like i was six years old like five six years old watching bruce lee and going i'm gonna be a kung fu master one day got yep. to 14 and realized it's not really a job <laughs> and i don't like hitting people <laughs> so i went you okay. don't like what sorry don't like hitting people oh okay <laughs> i didn't like hitting people and, and I, I realized it wasn't a job well i realized i was working with i was already teaching um taekwondo at the time with these guys and they were all security guards and they all went out on weekends and got in fights and then came and taught martial arts during the week yeah and i was like yeah i don't think that's for me <laughs> and i also been watching david Carradine in kung fu and he did a little bit of chinese medicine i was like oh i'm gonna be a chinese medicine guy so yeah. about 14 i started studying chinese medicine said 
that's going to be my thing. That's where I'm going to go. Um, but yeah, jump ahead years later, I went on a Qigong retreat, Chinese breathing and meditation exercise with my Qigong master. And I stayed, we went and stayed at the temple local here. And he's like, yeah, sleep on this bit of straw in the side of a room with a dirt floor. I'm like, wow, real authentic. Yep. This is going to really suck in a few days time. But I lay down there freezing at night, middle of winter. And he comes in the morning with two buckets. Because, oh, that's right. He asked the night before, what do you like for breakfast? I said, I eat fruit salad. And yep. he's like, Bitch. and I was still a student. He's like, but you're studying Chinese medicine. Yeah, yeah, but I've got lots of yang. So I eat fruit salad. I'm good. And he came in the morning with two buckets. And he goes, okay, would you like fruit salad or porridge or he said jolt like rice porridge yeah. and one bucket was just nothing the other bucket was steaming like you could see steam coming off and he's like fruit salad or porridge i'm like porridge no one eats porridge it's for old people fruit salad and he poured a bucket of ice water on me in my oh. bed and i was like wow okay like early ice bucket challenge there and i had to dry all my stuff out during the day because i just had a blanket he left me sleeping with and i was like okay and next morning he's like okay you want fruit salad or porridge and I'm like ha porridge and he poured warm water on my bed oh, <laughs> where, like, where was this it. taking place <laughs> what's that where what country was this taking place this was in, this was in Australia this was in Melbourne right so <laughs> he he's was learning like, about sarcasm he was learning about sarcasm yeah like, this is very funny isn't it I'm like yeah it's hilarious it's but hilarious. that's so old school and it's so um <laughs> classic like how you expect to be treated if you've watched those kung fu and movies was great. i was like i mean i was loving it he knew i was loving it this is so cool this is like like now i've got another wet blanket and i've got to dry it out but it made me really appreciate that especially first thing in the morning like we want a bit of warmth in there but like i said like you know we like uh in winter all our yang goes to the inside in summer it goes to the outside mm. but our day is also like four seasons uh, and there's there's a chapter in the Yellow Empress Classic, the second second book of the Yellow Empress Classic, which is like the Needle Classic, the Acupuncture Classic, and it has this beautiful line that says, uh, "It's uh, for anyone who's a Chinese medicine student, Ling Shu, chapter forty one. The day is as if four seasons. The the morning is spring, the middle of the day is summer, the afternoon is autumn, and the night time is winter. And so that gives us a little kind of microcosm of the seasons, even through mm -hmm. our day." And there's this really cool thing, and um, I, I wasn't going to do it because I hate so many podcasts I've heard lately, and someone comes on and goes, because in Chinese, the word this means this as well. And I usually go and look it up and go, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but people love to do that. And I was actually watching, uh, my wife's a counsellor, and I was watching, uh, watching one that, like, indirectly, she'd put me on, and this person's yeah. going, the character for joy in Chinese also means hatred. And I'm like, no, it does not. But people love making this stuff up. <laughs> But this is a legit one. You can go look it up, okay. sure, which means season in Chinese also means time in Chinese. So because that's how they measured time was by the season. So time, season, same thing. So spring, summer, autumn, winter, morning, midday, afternoon, nighttime, same thing. And our body does the same thing at nighttime. All our warmth goes into the center. In the morning, it starts to come up and out. In the day, it's on the surface. In the afternoon, it goes back in. So it's like a little sort of cycle of of those seasons and if you're keeping that in mind then the morning is one of those transitions like we're talking about a seasonal transition it's the transition of nighttime winter to morning spring we're coming out of the cold and starting to warm up so the last thing we want to do is dump something cold in our stomach in the morning like you know the, the morning is you know breakfast is the most important meal of the day and that little clock i talked about that's the original sort of chinese medical clock morning is spring so the wood element for those chinese medicine students watching middle of the day summer fire element afternoon autumn metal element nighttime uh, winter water element where's the earth the change of seasons in between which puts it right on the meal times okay during the like breakfast eat and dinner right and then other stuff throughout the day um, so in the morning you know breakfast the most important time and then we go dump something cold in there like that's when it really needs something warm so Getting back, like what I was saying, my compromise for some people who just insist on, I like a smoothie for breakfast. I'm like, okay, we're going to work on that. We're going to get there eventually. But in the meantime, if you want something raw, at least have it room temperature and have it with something warm. Have some ginger tea with it to help digest it. Mm. And especially in those transition times, I'm like, more tea, less smoothie. And then change yeah. that as you get further through, you know, seasonal yeah. change. So the best time in the day, thinking about that seasonal day would be yep. for the smoothie if someone's like desperate to have one <laughs> or they want to have one mm. would be like what lunchtime the midday yeah, lunchtime. The yeah, like, the when, when, we're, when we're the most active you know and it's like you know like if, if the stomach's just sort of woken up 
Now, obviously, you know, as I said before, if it was really cold, then you go, oh, hang on, what about, like Tyler said, for winter, ice cream in winter? I'm not saying any ice cream in winter. I'm just saying that's what we can best cope with it. And also, we can't have a smoothie at midnight. <laughs> like, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Uh, but in the I'm going to cut day, that up and make that a soundbite that you said to make it to have ice cream. Have ice cream winter guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, middle of the day when everything's most active because the yeah. stomach's woken up, and this is one of the weird things. And um, there is some, I know there is some Chinese medicine people who um, who who watch the channel, obviously. And I get clients who come in too and go, "Hey, I was reading a bit about Chinese medicine. I saw that you guys have an organ clock." Like here we do, we call it the organ clock or the Chinese medicine TCM clock. And it's got all these kind of times for different organs. And I struggled as a student to memorize it. Like I always remembered like uh, midnight was the gallbladder and like uh, three to 5 p.m. was I think the bladder because that's when I always used to take a, a toilet break because I hated the class I had at three to 5 p.m. at uni. And like all these weird things and like, and like the lung is early in the morning. And we'd always get told things like, oh, people wake up at 3 a.m. because that's liver time. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's the time of liver, 1 to 3 a.m. And people always wake up at liver time. I was like, wow, that really happens in practice. Like, it does. Mm. And a lot of people have heart attacks at midnight because that's the weakest time for the heart because the strongest time for the heart, the heart's the fire element, it's the colour red, is the middle of the day. That's when mm. the yang or yang is the strongest. And so we were taught, taught this weird clock and people come in and go, I looked at the clock tile and I think I have a, I think I have a gallbladder problem because it's happening at night time. Like, look, that clock came a lot later. That was a much later on invention in Chinese medicine. It was kind of mishmashing a few things together. It's really hard as a student to memorize it. It's not very practical. Um, and I like to go off the clock. I just said the morning spring. So it's the wood element, liver, gallbladder. The middle of the day is summer. So it's the fire element, the small intestine and the heart, and the pericardium. The afternoon is autumn, so it's the meta, a metal element, the lungs and the large intestine. And nighttime is winter, so it's the water elements, the kidneys and bladder. And when you have that in mind, it's easy because you just think, oh, you know, midday, summer, nighttime, water. Yeah, it makes a whole lot of sense. And if you have that clock in your mind, people go, oh, but why does the other clock work? And I'm like, and I didn't think of it one day until one of my clients who was just, he's a dad, just does terrible dad jokes. And he goes, oh, and his watch is broken. He goes, broken watch is even right twice a day. And I thought... <laughs> <laughs> even right twice a day the tcm clock for those who look at it it's right twice a day it's right for liver time and heart stuff because even a broken clock's right twice a day yeah so if you give it as seasons it means that you don't need any chinese medicine training you can you can understand that just for yourself just by understanding you know morning is spring like it just makes a whole lot more sense and you can kind of base your activities off that too and look a lot of us do naturally like we don't go and eat a whole lot of food you know, right before bed. Like probably a lot of us have too much dinner at night, you know, too mm. much food at night. We should have more during the day and less in the evening. Um, but we don't want to eat loads in the middle of the night or people go, hey, I, I read somewhere that I had a guy, he's re like really kind of cool, edgy guy. And he's like, he's, he's always on the beach doing some really cool stuff and people just gather around and he's like a bit of yeah. a guru guy. And he goes, I always do my meditation at midnight. Like it's the best time to do meditation. And I was like, why is that? And he's like, because it's the most yin time. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. Like, it's the most quiet time. But the most quiet thing you can do is sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's even more quiet than meditation. <laughs> I was like, meditation early morning, that's kind of cool because it's somewhere between, well, I like to think of meditation when I do Qigong, it's somewhere between being asleep, being unconscious, and being awake, being fully conscious. I'm kind of kind of transiting. It's like that change over mm. time. So, like, meditation in the morning makes a whole lot of sense exercise in the middle of the day is actually probably the most logical time to do it in terms of where our energy is like all our yangs come to the surface and it's okay to sweat in the middle of the day it's just not practical for most of us but the flip side of that is late at night for the dudes i see around here who like just got or not so much now because everyone's in lockdown here and not but for the people who drive who who commute to the city every day i'm an hour south of the city they mm. finish work at five six o'clock they commute back they come back they do family stuff like at nine and ten o'clock at night, they're out there running. They've got like little 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 glow sticks on. They're just running around, freezing in winter. And I'm like, this is not right. It's yep. winter. Everything's gone inside, and it's night time. Everything's gone inside. So like, you've got to kind of honor that and go. That's the time when I need to go inside. Like, do winter mm -hmm. stuff at night. Do summer stuff in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Do spring stuff in the morning. Do autumn stuff in the afternoon. And it kind of makes a lot more um, natural, logical sense that way. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it, it's true, right, that in um, the Neijing it says, like, if you do what's right in each season, you suit the next season, mm. right? 
so your body's prepared you up. for the yeah, season you up because, coming. Yeah, like we're saying, like you start moving upward, and then once you reach the point where you can't move up, when you when you when you all your young can't move up enough, it has to go out. Yeah. And everyone's like, well, what about when it goes back in? That's the opposite. Yeah, because when it goes out to the point where it can't go any further, it can only do one other thing. It can only come back in. Yes. And it's like that whole the solstice. Everyone knows, like, oh, the shortest day is the middle of winter. You know, roughly 21st of June here, Southern Southern Hemisphere, 21st of December, Northern Hemisphere. At that point, every day onwards is a little bit longer. And every mm. year people go like, it's going to get a little bit warmer. Hey, Tyler, did you notice it's a little bit warmer today? Days a little bit longer, like yeah. quite incremental amounts. But that's the thing, when yep. it reaches the peak, it yeah. has to go the other way. So when you do honor that and you, yeah, you follow that, then the natural next movement is to go in. And then when it's gone in as far as it can, it has to start going in and down. It has to start going back up again. Mm. And when you do honor that and you follow that, then you kind of live in accord with the seasons. Forget that we live inside and we use air con and all this sort of thing. Like blasting air con in summer is, yeah, like all our pores are open and we hit ourselves with really cold air. And then we go back out where it's warm. It does awful things like to our physiology. Mm. But mm. You know, forgetting the fact that we believe we live in an, an artificial environment, we're still held to the seasons. Like yeah. you know, people lying in bed going, I know it's going to rain today. They're in their bed. It's warm. They've got their ducted heating on their electric blanket. They know it's going to rain because we can still feel the seasons, even if we, even if we believe we're separated from yeah. them. We kind of have to still live with that and transition through that. Mm. that's kind of like early Chinese medicine was um, was a seasonal based medicine and people always roll their eyes when I do this because Tyler's the time guy he's the seasonal medicine guy he's like it's the most important thing in Chinese medicine I'm like take a look at the Yellow Emperor's book and the first three chapters are all about the seasons mm. and all the old medical systems are always about the seasons because when you know what's going on in a season if it's a really cold winter it's not going to be good for your arthritis if it's a really windy spring it's going to be bad for your hay fever a really hot summer is going to be terrible for your skin conditions. So they just understood that really strong link between the seasons and our body. And then it kind of got really complicated later. And for anyone who does Chinese medicine, they always like, oh, you're the time ghost. You know about all that weird time stuff and all that sort of, you know, I was like, no, I don't do all that stuff. I do seasonal stuff that yep. doesn't make sense. Like, you know, not the super complicated, obscure stuff where everyone on this point on this day gets this acupuncture point. Yeah, and I had a client ask me about it. It's like I read this thing where like the masters knew what point to use for everybody on a specific day. I'm like, but everyone's different. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, and we're all different, and we all interact with the seasons differently. I like winter. I don't like summer. This sort of thing, and that sort of that often says about our physiology too. Not enough to do a diagnosis. But when I get someone coming and go, I love winter. I'm like, okay, that's telling me something about. I hate summer. Yeah, okay, I know something's going on here. You know, this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because it also says in the Nijing in that chapter, I think that like don't hate the season, like not directly yeah. that, but it's like basically insinuating if you yeah. don't do what's right in each season and you or you go against the season, you're hating on it. Like, because yeah. I you have people like that, like, oh, I can't, I hate summer, I can't wait for it to end. And it's like, okay, so basically you're saying you're going to hate your life for the next three months. Like, and they do it. They just, like, it's exactly right. They hate on the season. Air con, yeah. ice drinks, air con, oh, ice I hate drinks. this. I hate yeah. winter. I can't wait for this other thing to come. And it's like, yeah, you have to endure this now. Like it's not, it's, you're making it a hardship for yourself even more, right? And it's kind of their poor body's trying to match that. Like when they're going cold drinks, cold drinks and aircon, the body's sort of going, okay, cold inside. No, cold on the outside. And then you walk out and it goes hot and the body's like, I don't know where to put the circulation anymore. Yeah. And, and, and this is something which took me a long time to get. It was only when I studied Chinese medicine, they got it. It doesn't say it in any of the Chinese medicine texts, but when you put an ice cold drink in, your body's response to cold going in is to melt that. So it, it actually warms your core. And they've now understood there's one of those things where years later they go, oh, we do some research. And that kind of matches up with what they were saying in Chinese medicine. They didn't say, they didn't talk about ice drinks in Chinese medicine. They talked about not putting cold in. You put cold in, your body's got to warm it up. So in summer, when you dump a big cold drink in, you actually increase your body temperature. So most people just dump another cold drink on top and another cold drink on top. But that's why a lot of cultures drink tea. Um, because it actually, you know, it warms the center and your body goes, well, I need to switch the thermostat to cold. Mm. And when you're doing that ice cold, air con on, cold drinks, you know, sleeping with, with nothing on, and then you're trying to sort of force your thermostat to read, it's cold. So it starts warming you up. Then you walk outside, it's warm. The body goes, now I'm warming up in more. I've got to cool you down. And it really messes with our, with our like mm. natural sort of rhythms in our body. And yeah, you're just hating on the seasons. You know? yeah. And the seasons are great. You know? I mean, I've, I've got a friend, uh, he's a lovely guy, Dolph, and I used to have a, a little cabin 
sort of um, out in the Gippsland, this sort of lakes area. And he said years ago, like he was really good on this. He was like, Tyler, I used to read a lot of the the um, the I Ching. And I was like, oh, you know the correct, correct pronunciation. So for those who are Australian, the I Ching, um, it's actually the I Ching. And uh, he used to read the I Ching and the Dao De Ching or the Tao Te Ching for those who are Australian, uh, the Dao De Ching. And he's like, so I, I live in a call with the seasons, but he said, Tyler, I'm 83 and I just don't want to do winter anymore. What do I do? And I'm like, Dov, you've done 83 winters. You are, I give you the gift of no more winters. You can just not do winter anymore. Don't worry about it. I said, same thing. You can drink every night now. No one cares. He's like, yeah, my kids don't, my kids leave me alone. He said, I should start smoking it. No, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. And he does, uh, he does his winters in, um, in uh, like up north. He does winters in Queensland and then comes down, does summers down here on, on the, on the, um, on the lakes down here and so he gets this kind of um pretty temperate all year round but mm. even he said yeah you know what I, I actually i feel my body missing winter and he said ah. i'm kind of sweating all year round and he said i'm losing weight but i'm not feeling good about it <laughs> so he had actually had to go and get back to doing some yeah, winter right. stuff because we just That's can't really interesting really... yeah and it was because it was he's a very aware guy and i was like and i was like you totally get a free pass and he's like tyler i'm gonna teach you something here even at my age, you don't get a free pass. And I was like, well, thank you for sharing that, Dov. You're, you're a yeah. very wise man. <laughs> and he yeah. goes, no, it's just old. When you're old and say things, people think it's wise. <laughs> he said, yeah, well, that's that true. a yeah. wise man once said, and they won't realize it was you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they're just wasting all their yang if they're just, if you're sweating in winter and summer or sweating all year yeah. round, right? And look, and, I will exercise next winter, I admit that. But this winter, it was nice to kind of go, oh, how does that work? Yeah, you get a little fat, but, you know, it's okay. Yeah, I just kind of... That's what you meant to do in winter. I'm storing. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of learned that advice and then I just applied it to the, to the, to the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, like, several years. Keep storing. Winter's about storage. <laughs> and you can see I'm just going to keep storing everything. I'm storing up for... I'm just, might just be a long storing. Time, you know? Anyway, um, yeah, so... <laughs> Um, what about this aircon thing? Because that's always, I want to hear your opinion on that, right? Because I, I had a student yeah. once when I was teaching a class and it gets very hot where I live. I'm sure it gets hot in Melbourne too, but it gets really hot in Perth, like 40, 40 degrees, sometimes 42 Celsius, mm. um, right? And it's like you're boiling hot. This guy in the classroom wouldn't accept the aircon being on, right? Yeah. He, he was like, he goes, Oh, there's always that one guy he was always the one guy right and yeah. all the rest of the students were like no not you again and he would he he would basically urge me as the teacher to like turn off the air con so because he was like if we're going to be doing Chinese medicine it's summer we should just be sweating it out <laughs> anyway yeah. um what do you yeah. think about this that idea because it is it, mm. I notice it in Perth being very prominent like you'll go from yeah. a being in a boy like literally you go outside from this crispy nice refrigerator air con to really mm. hot sweating and then you know obviously that coming back and in and out isn't great but what about people that just they're just like right it's hot i'm going to put the air con on and just have the air con on the whole mm. day yeah well i was like i always think like don't be that one guy firstly because no one likes that one guy i mean like, yeah. <laughs> i always remember having i had uh when I was teaching one stage, I had a whole lot of the students over to my place. It's probably not allowed to do it as a teacher. But I was like, hey, come to my place. I've got a, got a bit of land and I'm going to, we're going to have a night. And I did pizzas for everybody. I rolled out all these pizza base. I built a little wood fire oven. Yeah. And then I brought out the cheese and this one student went, no, we'll have no dairy because we're Chinese medicine. Everyone just looked at him and went, oh, like, no way. And, I'm against and dampness. I, no. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, he was that one guy. And later on, he was in a coma over this cheese. He was just like eating pizza. And I'm like, oh, my God. He was just loving it so much. I'm like, sometimes you just got to eat the cheese. You know, just have the cheese. And sometimes you just have to turn the aircon on. And look, yes, yeah. you know, if you go really strict, but the, all the classics and Chinese medicine was always written in such a way that it had to be, you had to be able to interpret it. And you had to be had to be flexibly applied, not rigidly applied. Mm -hmm. There's actually um, there was a famous uh, Chinese medicine practitioner. He sort of said that like um, he talked about one of the systems that I teach, like using time. And he said applying it blindly and saying actually it's like well, I see my wife do this. She goes, but it says it's raining, and I'm like, but it's safe. but it says it's raining on my phone. <laughs> and yeah. so like, and like, applying these systems rigidly and like it says it's going to be a cold winter according to this calculation so they're out there treat, telling everyone to take herbs for a cold winter 
but it's not actually cold outside. Like you're supposed to observe the environment. He said, otherwise it's like a blind fortune teller. And that's kind of a joke because like they're a palm reader and they're blind, so they can't actually see anything. <laughs> okay, like, yeah. But, but you've got to be flexible with your approach. So I think that means, yeah, when it's stinking hot, you do need a bit of air con, but here's the thing, you don't need to crank it like we go, I need it to be 12 degrees. God, if you had that in winter, you'd die. Yes. <laughs> and obviously, our, our temperatures do vary a little. It's always interesting when people, I didn't have an air con until I sort of got a place on my own. And even then I had an old clunker and it wasn't until I got my clinic, I actually had like a reverse cycle with the degrees on it. And I used to always get in hotels and go like, oh, like oh, 21 sounds good. And at nighttime we'd be there going, oh my God, it's why is it so hot when it's 21 degrees? In winter, 21 feels warm. Yeah. It's all about where our young is. Yep. In summer, all our young has come up to the surface. So 21 degrees feels hotter than it does in winter. And in winter, when all the young's in the middle, 21 degrees doesn't feel as warm. So that's why in winter we sit there and go, let's put it up to 24 or 27. And in summer, we don't stop at 21, like room temperature. We go right down to like, like 15 degrees. I always do multiples of three. It's a Chinese thing. Yeah, okay. 15 or 18 degrees. It doesn't need to go all the way down there. And I actually think some of the cooling systems we've got, which are taking off more nowadays, I mean, evaporative coolers to an extent, but I always find that it's made me sweaty. <laughs> it's yeah. just too much moisture. Um, but split systems. And one thing that... Um, uh, I had a friend who was doing a lot of work with this and they're installing systems where it pumps the warm air from your roof into your house in winter. And in summer, it pumps the warm air from your house into your roof and the cool air out. So it sort of, it sort of circulates the air around. So you get a much more natural transition of temperature. And I think that's mm. the thing, like if it's 40 degrees outside, bring your temperature down to 21 inside, but you don't need to bring it down to like 12 degrees. Yeah. You know, like it's just too much of a transition. So you kind of try and minimize that transition and you don't, you don't double up. Like I always tell my girls like, okay, if you're, if you're hot and you want to have a cold drink, sure, have a cold drink, but don't, don't then have the icy pole and then walk around. Like they'll walk around and get an ice brick and just stuff it down their pants and just walk around. I'm like, this is way too much. And like, why do you say it hurts them? When you get old, things like this hurt. It just hurts to touch them. Like, don't make me pick them up. It hurts my hands. Yeah. And so like, don't double down on the stuff. Like, do, you know, find, find one source to cool yourself down um, and use, I usually say like a not, a not as low temperature but we can use a little bit of wind. Just being aware though, when we've got wind blowing directly on ourselves, our pores are open. Wind, we say in, in the Yellow Empress Classic, it says it five different times. It's the chief of all diseases, the, the bringer of all diseases, the origin of all the diseases, the, the creator of all the diseases. Like wind sort of blows, especially at the moment with COVID, wind blows bad <laughs> stuff into you. Yeah, yeah. So when you've got, you have a bit of air circulation, you don't have it blowing directly onto your skin. That's why I think ceiling fans are really great. And yeah. just not as high. And look, and look, I've got an air con here. I don't put it in the treatment rooms and I refuse to have it in the treatment rooms. And I lost a few people a couple of summers ago where it got really hot. Mm. It doesn't happen a lot. We had, we had three days over 40 and a few people like, I'm going to go to this other clinic. They've got air con there. It's awesome. They're all high tech. And I'm yeah. like the low tech clinic. I, I have like, I remember one of my colleagues coming once. She came down for a clinic day here and went, you have like no tech here. And I was like, oh, I've got an FBOS machine and I've got speakers like wired into each room. It's so like that totally doesn't count. I'm like tech free. <laughs> I have zero tech here. I have my tablet which goes with me. So I don't like it, but I've got a split system here. What, what other tech do they expect to be there? Like that's what I have. Oh, her clinic was really cool. She has like um, she has like every not just I mean, like I I do all my notes on paper still. Oh, and okay. I still do all my receipts on paper. And yeah. my and my my appointment book is a paper diary. And okay. I loved it recently. For anyone who's in Chinese medicine, remember this little while Clinico went down. And everyone was freaking out because they couldn't access their client yeah. files. And I'm taking a photo of my diary going, it's still working fine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I can book an appointment quicker on my paper diary than anything Paper else. hasn't dissolved. <laughs> What's that? The paper didn't dissolve. No. <laughs> and it's like, for me, I know I've got bad signal in this area. My next door neighbor was an organic green grocer and he fought against getting a tower put on the top of the shop. I'm like, and he won. You're awesome. It means I had crap phone signal here. Yeah. And so I'm like, I just got sick and tired of trying to unlock things and waiting for things to load. So I'm all paper here. But yeah. I do have a split system in the office and I just keep it on like a gentle temperature and open the treatment room doors. And I don't have ceiling fans in there, which is what I'd love to have. That's my next step. I just have a mm. fan blowing away and I always come in and people have turned it around right on their face I'm like yeah. no it faces away from you it's just circulating around the room yeah and the same for heat too like not to overcook 
Um, like, you know, I, I know some practitioners really get into it, but they do like an electric blanket, then there's a heater at the end of the bed, then an then a infrared lamp on top, and you walk yep. in the room and go... It's like a sauna <laughs> treatment. It's like, yeah, it's like way too much. We have moxa for a reason, use moxa. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the same in winter, not overcooking, because you do still have to, at some point, go outside. And especially like in Australia, especially in Melbourne, like most of my experience, I've lived all my life in Melbourne, is here. And I had a friend from Germany who um, said one day, she was out here and she said, the coldest winter I ever spent was winter in Melbourne. And I was like, what? And she's like, well, I stayed with her friends, Rod, and I'm like, hi, oh, he's a little hippie that like lives in, lives in the northern suburbs in Melbourne and has this little old Victorian house with like a pot belly stove and they just have blankets. She, she just froze all winter. And so like, you know, in Germany, we, we you know, we, or well, she actually, she'd been living in Canada. So it was even more so. She's like, we go underground, we have heated seats and we have everything's all set up. So they can kind of avoid the outside more, but you still have to transition to it. Whereas I must admit my mate Rod, who just lived like in this little place with this pot belly stove, he has like the strongest cheese. This guy never gets cold. He's just mm. like conditioning himself for years of doing tough winters. Yeah. And, just, and, and like, yeah, and, and it's probably... Maybe it's a little too extreme, but doesn't overheat. Like just keeps things just warm enough and mm. blankets instead of electric blankets and more clothes instead of, you know, hot packs and things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I look like from, from, I can understand all these perspectives. Right. And I, and I can, I, like, I, I get the same thing too. Like from some patients, they, you know, they all, they, they will leave your clinic if you don't have the air con on, <laughs> especially where, where I am, like in Perth, if you don't have an air con, people think you're just living below the poverty line. You're, you're, you must be something wrong with you right um but like and i can understand maybe maybe people want to it might be healthier to stay without heating let's say in winter but like in Mm -hmm. summer if you live somewhere where it's so hot yeah how about just sweating it all out like is that just a matter of like saying well you need to be more healthier so you're not sweating it so much all the time yeah look like, i think um do you think it, it preserves people's yang is what i'm saying to have an egg on on so they're I, not I think, yeah i think so if you much. don't overdo it i think you can still pres- preserve your yang i think if you overdo it yes it is going to damage your yang yep if you don't overdo it but also the other extreme guy i'm just going to sweat it out if you haven't grown up with that sort of conditioning like, and you look at cultures like like traditional uh, traditional cultures where they still do live off the land yep. and they can do that and they're prepared for it. And they build their buildings in amazing ways. And like I was looking at some really cool stuff um, last year on, on Aboriginal architecture. Everyone thinks that the Indigenous Australians didn't build and they did build and they built some like really amazing stuff and clever mm. things where it's creating like, basically like sort of creating an air conditioning system into their building. Yeah. And so they, even they found ways to adjust their temperature, but... I think if someone if someone grows up in an environment where, you know, I said I didn't have aircon as a kid, so I was able to cope with it better. But now as an adult, because I've lived more aircon, it would be a lot tougher for me to try and go through a really hot season or, or move to a really hot climate and not accept that I'm going to need air to, air to, aircon sometimes. I'm going to get sick from it. Mm. So I think either extreme is not great, you know, unless yeah. you know, unless you're an exception. Like the Inuits have always lived there. They can deal with that, but they've got generations of dealing with that. We can't just go, I'm going to live like an Inuit in winter and just build a little ice cave <laughs> yeah. and just hide in it with some, with some, and just have, have lots of rugs and that'll be enough. Like it's yeah, yeah. not enough for us. We are, we are a little softer yeah. you know, living in the modern world. So yeah, yeah I think not, not either extreme. Don't be that guy, but don't be that guy either. So <laughs> all good. Yeah. <laughs> They're all good suggestions. I think that's great. And like the mm-hmm. biggest problem we have for, for summer, I'm sure you have this too, is patients sleep in the um sleep, like they go to bed and it's hot and then they open the window and like in in perth particularly we have really strong sea breeze that comes in at yeah. a certain point and sometimes it doesn't come in until the, like if it's been a really hot time it won't come in until maybe midnight or something and then the person wakes up and their neck's all <laughs> stuck to one side yeah. they're like what's yeah. like i've been attacked by the cold in the night and they were like how could that possibly happen yeah and they get all these cold diseases in the middle of summer and it often hits harder and this is something it talks about in the yellow empress classic again it talks about what they call a deficiency wind, like the wind of the wrong season. So mm. that's like a cold wind coming in summer. So especially, and this happens all the time, and I remember last, last year we were down the beach and everyone's there, and then all of a sudden a cold breeze just came through and everyone's just kind of there and hanging out. And the next day I've got two of the people I was there with on the beach coming to the clinic going, my neck's locked up, my shoulder's locked up. And I'm like, I was like, are you guys serious? Because I was bitching about it at the time. I was going like, oh, come on, guys, you've got to cover up a bit. That's a cold. They're like, oh, don't be ridiculous. And I thought they were mocking me coming in the next time. They're like, no, legit, like I can't move my arm and my neck. Yeah. Because all that circulation has gone to the surface, like our surface is nice and protected. 
But if it gets through the surface and the pores are open so it can, it gets to the middle and there's no warmth there to protect it. So like in the Yellow Empress Classic, it talks about the deficiency wind. If you get that cold wind in summer and it gets through your defenses, it really settles in because there's no warmth in the middle to deal with it if it gets to the center. And the same the other way around, if you get a really warm wind in or a warm temperature, it doesn't have to be wind, just warm temperature in winter, um, then that can make you really sick as well. And I, that was a harder one to get my head around. I'm like, but if it's warm, like what? I guess, you know, my circulation will come to the surface a bit. Uh, that's what happens though. You know, I was like, well, your circulation goes to the surface. Now it's all at the surface and it goes cold the next day. It's in the wrong place. Or worse still, it gets a warm day and we all go, yay, run outside. We all put our G-string, our thong on, and we throw in our singlet and we run outside. Yeah. It's one warm day. It's not the right weather, and all our all our young, all our circulation is not in the right spot to deal with it, and we mm. and we get much sicker because of that. But especially all this cold stuff, I treat more um, cold injury to stiff neck in summer because it's not cool to wear a scarf in summer than it is in winter, where it's okay now. I was told, I was informed by a fourteen-year-old uh, uh, young lady who may watch this podcast one day. Thank you for filling me in on fashion. Scarves are now cool in winter again. I ask her each season, is it cool to wear a scarf? Scarves are cool, like you know yeah. any winter now that's okay but not in summer okay and then, uh, i did have to agree because i have a friend of mine who's uh, living in hong kong at the moment i hope he watches this it'd be great mark if you're looking at this he's an actor and his latest uh, promotion shots was him lying on a banana lounge with sunglasses on shirtless wearing a, a woolen scarf yep and it was just, i was just quite concerned as to what temperature required you to be shirtless but wear a woolen scarf so mm. a little confusing <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like we, we don't protect, we don't cover our neck in um, in summer. So we get these really bad, like stiff necks. Mm -hmm. And you've got to treat it a little bit like a winter pathology, which is kind of cautioned against. Like you shouldn't do a winter treatment in summer. Like you shouldn't warm summer up too much, but you have to. And the side effect of that might be, I was working on this, um, oh, it was, I guess last summer it must have been, someone came in really stiff neck and I'm warming it up. He's like, I'm really sweating now. I'm really sweating lots. And then he said, I didn't sleep for like the next two nights. He's like, mm. like, well, he's like, was that a side effect? And I said, yeah, I guess it kind of was. Like, we had to melt your neck. And as a result, you had too much heat going. I'm sure there's someone watching and goes, oh, I could have treated it without doing that. I, I know, like, okay, you weren't there on the floor at the time, okay? Um, and, yeah, for him, and yeah. he was willing to accept that because he'd done the wrong thing. He'd slept, like, with the air con on all night and no sheets and woke up yeah. freezing. So he knew he'd made the mistake. You know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is so it's such an interesting topic. And it's, like, I think it's so vital that, it, it's something I'm super passionate about, like letting people know these things that they can, they're just common knowledge in Chinese medicine. Yeah, we don't even um, think they, of it. We just sort of, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and they, they should be part of what you do to keep yourself healthy. Mm. And um, it's stuff that people can just take action on. And it seems so simple, but it actually does make a, a big difference, right? Like, mm. yeah. And I, the, the biggest thing that clashed with me when I first started learning Chinese medicine was I, I was never taught anything about, oh, you need to behave differently in different seasons. Like, we yeah. kind of expect it in the West to just everything should just be the same. Like you should just soldier on. Like you're kind of I'm like sure a good little, summer all year round. <laughs> yeah, like you're a good soldier doing all your extra exercise in winter. Because look at me battling yeah. the elements. I'm still out walking in the middle of winter at night time. Yeah, <laughs> with my glow sticks and everything. Like you know, yeah, we need to treat our bodies better and differently. And I really love what you said about paying attention to like around you when the season's changing. Like if you have plants and and things and even with animals and the way they behave and that sort of stuff mm. like being aware of that makes you aware of your environment there's and that not you know that that's that only good can come from that right being aware yeah. of that stuff but we do get a little stuck on but my phone says mm -hmm. <laughs> like okay that's and look i use it sometimes i'm like is it going to rain later today and i was like i said to my wife this morning oh phone says it's going to rain later today that's going to really suck because i got a tin roof and I'm doing doing this podcast with Marie. And my wife's yeah. like, come on, honey, you know it's never right. And I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. Like, like yeah. you're getting awesome. over years ago. Yeah, and it, it took a long time to change some things. And uh, my wife might watch this, but she'll appreciate this. And she's like, I was never like that. But, and also, I was her husband. Like, you're my husband. Shut up. You don't know anything. Like, you know, don't tell me about all this stuff. And I remember she was working as a dental nurse and she went in to have uh, on the lunch break. And it was, um, I think it actually was in winter. And on the lunch break, she went in, she was running late in the morning. So she grabbed a can of tuna and a, like, and some corn and some and lettuce and just made like a salad. 
and she was working for some local dentists called the Wangs. They have a big cactus out the front, this big Wang cactus out the front, which is kind of funny. And uh, the Wang brothers who run this dental surgery and they're all Chinese and they get to the lunch break and they're all, and they all pull out their lunch and they're pulling out like the full lunch, like multiple courses, like uh, rice level. And then there's this, all these little lunch boxes yeah. and, and they're all heating their food up. And she sat down there with it, with her salad and she kind of, and she swears she never said this. I know she did. I promise she said, my stomach cramped up before I even got the food. <laughs> in my mouth my stomach just went oh and now i see her going to people no 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 and she doesn't ever say it's chinese news so no no think about it. this doesn't make sense don't put cold in there it's winter put mm. warm in there you like relax the tissues yeah and, yeah. Uh, yeah and it's really cool like and it's, it doesn't have to be a chinese medicine thing it can just be a looking at the seasons thing but the cool thing is when i get like my mate dog sort of saying hey look i don't do winters anymore and he comes back he does somehow have, have some understanding of chinese philosophy and culture but what he was explaining made perfect sense in Chinese medicine, even if he didn't know that, because he just observed what was out there. And it was really cool. He just followed that. Went, oh, yeah, leaves are coming off the tree. Time to put more clothes on. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. I love it. <laughs> it's been so great to talk to you about this stuff. And yeah, thank awesome you so much always. for sharing your knowledge and, um, yeah, taking your time um, and giving up part of your <laughs> Friday afternoon. Um, yeah. So thank you so love much. It. Thanks so much for having me on. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And um, look, Marie does a really great effort on this and she's a fantastic ambassador for Chinese medicine. So um, can I do the click the subscribe, press the subscribe yeah, button. You here. can. Click the subscribe button, like, and uh, donate. Do you have a, it's probably a donate thing. I'm it's not no really donation. Yeah, not yet. Yeah, do that, like do it. And um, yeah, look, it's really great Marie doing this because it it's help, helps a lot of uh, people in general public to appreciate our medicine on a much more simple, basic human level without it being something obscure and different. And also for people in Chinese medicine, just to, for us to connect up. I haven't been able to, I haven't seen Marie in like two years now. We used yeah. to be hanging out like two, three times a month and going to bars and seedier places and all sorts of weird things. And mm. so it's great. China, and also for Chinese medicine students, um, like getting to see what other practitioners are doing. Cause it's great if you are sort of, taking that step further from sort of just having an interest or being like a Chinese medicine hobbyist, actually studying Chinese medicine, it's really important. And I said, my whole thing is education in Chinese medicine. I think the biggest problem is people don't know enough Chinese medicine. So you need to find out about everything out there and find what works well for you, not what someone told you is the best thing to do. Yeah. But the best thing to do is time stuff, which I do. Yep. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for that. Thanks for that vote of confidence, Tyler. <laughs> it's lovely to hear you say that. Um, so before we go, I just want to let people know what, what Tyler does or what you do. Um, it, obviously, you're a practitioner in Melbourne, um, and we'll put the link in the description below this. And if you're on, listening to this on Apple or Spotify or something, and you can't see those, it'll be in the show notes. But if you can't see that, then go to YouTube, and um, it's, it'll be all there in the description, very easy to find. Um, Tyler also teaches Chinese medicine at a couple of different places. So the other place that I bang on about... <laughs> On this channel, a lot of people have asked me, how do we study classical Chinese medicine? Yeah. I get that question a lot, which is great because obviously <clears> I'm <throat> beating the right drum, <laughs> one of the right drums. Um, there's two places you can study classical Chinese medicine that Tyler has um, his uh, teachings in <laughs> amongst mm. those places, let's say. So if you're interested in studying um, for acupuncture, um, it's Institute of Neijing, right? The Institute Neijing. of Neijing Research. Neijing China. Research, yeah. Yep. So institute, institute of Neijing Research.com. That's yeah. it. David White um, runs that course and mm. like in he, it's his, his uh, institute. Mm. And also Tyler teaches some of the units through that place. Yeah, I teach some timey wimey stuff on that. So timey yeah. wimey, he's Dr. Who <laughs> of Chinese <Yeah>. medicine. <laughs> Are you going to save us all? <laughs> You're going to get the Atardis and bring us back to oh, 1982. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so <laughs> he teaches there and he also teaches through the college, oh, not the college, but the place where I've done some of my studies and Tyler's done like extensive studies through ICAM, um, not ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not ice cream. <laughs> not ice cream. The Institute, the Institute of, of Classics of East Asian Medicine. Yep. <laughs> and uh, so he, he teaches um like the, the stuff that we've been talking about but for practitioners in a hugely incredibly more much more detailed way and i think you're probably the only person who teaches the the wool 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 
Yeah. 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 That was good. That was good. The, 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 the five five phases or five. The woo, woo, why, I don't know why I can't say it. I'm reading it off the sheet. <laughs> woo you and Lil Chi. Is that right? Woo woo. <laughs> Yeah. There, is, um, there is a few people internationally um, doing some teaching of that, but uh, we haven't to date found anyone with like a, a like a fully comprehensive course, which is why we created the course with mm. Oliver Sluice, who is the, the head of our institute, and myself. We sort of developed this course, which is kind of the, the most comprehensive that, that we've come across for teaching like the herbal medicine side of things with seasonal medicine. And yep. um, yeah, teaching that in Australia and well, I suppose I suppose teach that in the US and it's kind of ironic because um, it's all about um, part of it is sort of being able to forecast, be able to sort of prognosis forecast, be able to predict ahead what sort of weather patterns will come and then based on that what illnesses. So some people like to use it to predict, to predict epidemics. And we got cancelled last year due to COVID, which is kind of ironic that we got cancelled due to an epidemic. So yeah. obviously to do more study in predicting epidemics. Yeah. Um, yeah, we teach that in Australia and the US and that's uh, face-to-face live. So there isn't anything online for that. And we're hoping for those interested to start teaching some of the ICAAM uh, courses live in Australia. Um, uh, probably next year we'll start teaching those live when we're finally allowed to travel around in our own country again. Yeah. Um, but there are, there, there are courses available online um, uh, that I know teachers and um, yeah, my teaching at, I, at INR, the Institute of Aging Research, that's all online. We don't, uh, none of my stuff there is done face to face. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot of people watch this channel that are other practitioners um, and all, m- the majority of people are, are either students of Chinese medicine that might be partway through their studies. And, um, you know, I, I've, I know students who think they might be doing a course in TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, but they're also interested in more classical styles. And some of those people just jump into the INR stuff at the same time and they start learning, you can start learning that stuff co- yeah. you know, uh, alongside of it. Cause it's, I've, I've done some units through there as well. It's very easy to log in and yeah. learn and get, you know, get, get started learning in that stuff and you can learn at your own pace so, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So awesome, Tyler, thank you so much for your time. You. and your expertise and just explaining it in a, a fun and easy way <laughs> that people can relate to yeah. so um have a great rest of the day and, um see you again soon thank you and if you've stayed at the end thanks so much for your time cheers thanks awesome. um now i can see that your title or pronoun is time lord <laughs> 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 i had a really good laugh when i opened that up <laughs> I mean, it, look, it's, it's a little arrogant, so I'll, I'll accept master of space and time. Because <laughs> I don't want to misgender you. <laughs> <So>, sorry. <laughs>